In this video, we're going to take a look at an interesting exponent that can result as we're simplifying these expressions. We've already seen the quotient rule, which says that we can subtract exponents to simplify them. a cubed over a to the fifth, then, would be a to the 3 minus 5, or a to the negative 2 power. But that's kind of weird, in that we have a negative exponent. How can we multiply a by itself negative 2 times? So let's try thinking about this in another way. a cubed means we have 3 a's multiplied together over a to the 5th means we have 5 a's multiplied together. When we reduce, a's divide out in the numerator and denominator, and all the a's in the numerator are gone, which means we technically have a 1 left over in the numerator. We have 1 over a times a, or a squared. Simplifying using this other way, we end up with the fraction 1 over a squared. Because both of the ways we simplified are acceptable methods of simplifying algebraically, both of these must be equivalent. a to the negative 2 is the same as 1 over a squared. Negative exponents simply mean we've run out of things to divide out. When dividing out, a to the negative 2 meant the a's were actually in the denominator. Notice now, when we move it to the denominator, the exponent is positive. And we prefer positive exponents when simplifying. They're much happier than those negative exponents. And so whenever we're simplifying an expression, and we come across or end up with a negative exponent, what we will do is we will adjust it so that the exponent is positive. Negative exponents mean the reciprocal, or flipping its location over. So, if we come across an expression, such as this one on the bottom, a cubed, b to the negative 2, c, over 2, d to the negative 1, e to the negative 4, f squared, there are several things that need to be fixed in this expression. We don't like negative exponents. We don't allow any negativity in mathematics. It's a very positive experience. So, what we need to do is get rid of all this negativeness. You'll notice... whoops, my writing's disappearing. You'll notice b to the negative 2, there's a negative exponent on the b. Also on d to the negative 1, we see a negative exponent. Also on e to the negative 4, we see a negative exponent. Notice the negative exponents, only the thing right it's attached to is negative. I did not say the 2 had a negative exponent on it. In fact, it doesn't have an exponent at all. Those parts that have negative exponents are going to need to move to the opposite part of the fraction, because negative exponent means reciprocal. So, in the numerator, we still have a cubed and c. But the b to the negative 2 is being moved down to the denominator by virtue of the negative exponent. Once we've moved it, now that exponent is a positive 2. Similarly, in the denominator, we have a 2. We like the number to be in front of the variable, so I'll stick with that. Then we see d to the negative 1. That's a negative exponent, so its reciprocal moves it to the numerator as d to the positive 1. Similarly, with e to the negative 4, it moves up to the numerator as e to the positive 4. The f squared does not have a negative exponent on it, so it stays in the denominator, and we end up with our simplified final result of a cubed c, d, e to the 4th, over 2b squared, f squared. When simplifying with exponents, we like our final answer to only have positive exponents, which we get by moving them to the opposite location.